Hello everybody, I'm Sebastian Linares and I'd like to thank the big festival for having me in this great online edition uh, and giving me the opportunity to play and talk about music. In this, uh, first I want to apologize for my French accent. I'll try to be as clear as uh, possible. Uh, in this little video, I want to talk about a very important thing for me. It's uh, the fun we must have to, when we play the guitar. Uh, and it's not always so easy because we play in the same pieces, we play in the same music over and over again, we work hard, and sometimes it can be a little uh, boring. So we have to find some ways to uh, keep the fun, to keep uh, our guitar alive, our guitar fresh and interesting, and uh, still have fun after all these years. Of course, there are many, many ways to work on that. One really interesting way is the ear training. I'm used to practice it in a very particular way, I just try to play everything I hear in a day. So I am in my apartment and the windows are open and uh, there is a guy uh, walking down the street and singing a melody. I grab my guitar and try to play the melody. Uh, I don't know, there is someone who ringing at the door. I just try to play the doorbell. Uh, also popular music um, are very useful to work on ear training. Uh, you may have a boyfriend or a girlfriend and she comes to you and say, uh, look, I know you play Bach, I know you play Ginastera, I know you play all those difficult stuff, but I like Madonna. Um, can you play Madonna for me? You can't say no, you have to try. <laughs> you have to try something, even if it's two notes or two chords you remember, you have to try something. So. Um, let's see the chorus of uh, Papa Don't Preach. So now your lover is happy and you can notice that Papa Don't Preach is based on the Spanish cadenza. Only this chord is a minor seven and not a major one. Um, another example, you may have a daughter and she's absolutely crazy about Billy Hellish. She listens uh, a bad guys 10,000 times a day and she comes to you and says, Daddy, Scarlatti is so beautiful, but can you play bad guys for me? So you can disappoint your daughter. So um, here we go. Now your daughter is impressed and um, you can teach her that um, Billy Eilish, bad guys of Billy Eilish, is only a heavy blues rock. Um, another, uh, one last example. You, maybe you're fortunate enough to have your grandmother alive and um, you go to lunch uh, on, sun on Sunday with her and at coffee time she wants to sing and ask you to play Historia de un Amor.
So your grandmother is glad. She has her singing time and you have practiced your tremolo. And uh, this is a perfect transition from the next part of this video. I do think uh, tremolo should not be practiced always in the same way with the same uh, position, with the same exercise, with the same pieces all the time. We have to find different approaches to work tremolo. Uh, so maybe we can learn flamenco tremolo. To play the flamenco tremolo, we have to play the thumb, then the first finger, and then classical tremolo. The thumb, the first finger, and classical tremolo. It's uh, a thing like this. So as you can hear, there is a, a, a very a rhythmical quality. The classical tremolo is more rubato. More, more bel canto. So now you know how to play classical and flamenco tremolo. Uh, why don't you try to mix both techniques? Uh, maybe we can try it in Sabika's Faruka. Uh, you know the last part is a big tremolo. So I start with the flamenco. Then classical here. Flamenco is back, etc. Another way to uh, enlarge your tremolo, uh, you can do it on different strings. Uh, you can play the second finger on the second string and keep the first and the third on the first string and uh, let the thumb go where he wants. Uh, many years ago, I wrote a bagatelle. I can send you uh, if you want, if you write to me. Um, and I use this technique with open strings. And I thought it it gives some uh, some interesting effect. I show you. There is another way to uh, practice tremolo differently. Uh, in uh, Rafael Andia's piece, which is called Toccata e Passacalie. You can find it on his website, you can download it, it's free. Uh, in this piece, he combines tremolo with rasgado, and it's not a very easy thing because tremolo is such a delicate technique, uh, and rasgado is more heavy one. Besides the finger, don't go in the same direction. So uh, to realize it, you have to, um, uh, to make some kind of circles like this. So here's the music. In the last part of this video, I'd like to talk about improvisation. Uh, 
And it's always difficult to uh, give some advices to practice improvisation. We don't know uh, where to start, how to start. Last year, I was uh, uh, making a recording session for my radio program Guitar Guitar on uh, France Music, and I was recording some uh, Villa Lobos pieces. Uh, so it was a pretty serious session, and I have a song in my head, and this song was a very, very corny song. Uh, I used to love it and to listen to it when I was a young teenager, and it's called Nothing's Gonna Change My Love For You of Glenn Medeiros. You can listen it on YouTube if you don't know it, it's worth it. So I record and I play this uh, first prelude with this song in my head. Uh, and when I come back home, I say to myself, why don't you try to play what you had in your head during this session? So the first prelude of Vida Lobos and this song at the same time. So prelude uh, start here on this uh, B. So I might start here and play the melody of the song, then start the prelude, um, and uh, then I can develop the song melody with the Villa Lobos tricks, and I can try to play uh, Villa Lobos like a romantic pop song. So, let's go. Mm -hmm. 